fellow astronomers, Jonathan here. I'm back at the Besser Museum Planetarium today to talk to you about some more cool astronomy stuff. This week we're going to focus on an object known as M42, or the Orion Nebula. It is one of the brightest and most easily seen nebula in the sky, so today I'm going to show you not only how to find this nebula, but also give you a little bit of information on what it is you're looking at whenever you see the Orion's Nebula in the sky. So let's get started by focusing in on the constellation which houses this, Orion itself. Now to find M42, we start by looking in the middle of this constellation at Orion's belt. This string of three stars right here. Very easy object to find in the sky. From there, we simply go down until we find this vertical trio of stars resting beneath the belt. This is known as Orion's sword. And the nebula is actually that middle star right here. It's just to the naked eye, it looks like a star because, well, we're so far away from it. If we zoom in a little bit using a research telescope, we could see a little more detail than is possible with the naked eye. Now, if you're ever observing Orion's nebula with your own telescope, keep in mind that this image that I'm about to pull up is not something you'll see. You'd probably see a lot less detail in stars, and the colors will most likely just be black and gray. Photos like this are usually taken with very expensive and well-crafted telescopes. There's usually photos that are long exposures as well, and even have some little bit of editing done to them to make them more viable for scientists. But all that really is for a different video. So now I just want to point out, don't expect to see something this beautiful in your backyard. Now the nebula itself is a vast region of gas and dust floating around inside of our galaxy. It's sort of somewhat densely compacted together. Uh, it's kind of hard to explain when looking at a still image. So instead, let's dive into the nebula itself and actually take a look at what's happening on the inside of this giant gaseous cloud. So you can see the dense regions of gas all around with the small gulf-like region in the middle. This nebula, like all nebula, are star-forming locations. They're sort of like factories that produce new stars. All this dust gets pushed and crammed together by gravity and other forces until it gets so hot and dense at the core that elements form, fusion, uh, and produce stars, which is what we're seeing right now. Some of the most vivid stars inside the Orion Nebula is this small string of pearls right here with these four giant stars. If we look around that, we can see plenty of other stars as well of more normal sizes, some likely the size of our own sun. On top of that, we also have these small gaseous clouds surrounding some of the stars, and these are protoplanetary disks. They're going to be easier to see if we get a bit closer, but for the most part, protoplanetary disks happen to just be the sort of leftover stardust and matter that the star itself didn't suck up. Ooh, here's a good visualization of it. They essentially form the rest of the matter inside the solar system, the planets, the moons, even the asteroids and the comets. So nebula are not only good for producing stars, they're great at producing solar systems. And even our sun came from a very similar nebula very long, long ago. All right, everybody. That is our video for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content we produced. If so, I ask that you subscribe to the channel. That way you can see more of it in the future. Until next time, though, keep your eyes on the stars.